are. So, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it, especially those of us that have been here since morning. Uh, I'm exhausted, so thank you so much. Um, so today I'll be talking about open educational resources, um, specifically Merlot as an open educational resource. Um, so first of all, um, I'm just going to give like a very brief um, description or overview of um, what Merlot is all about. Uh, so um, the full meaning is a multimedia educational resource for learning and online teaching. So uh, Merlot is basically um, an open educational resource, which is um, they provide content for um, easy um, learning, um, teaching, and other academic uses for people. And it's it, Merlot is free, but um, most open educational resources they actually provide content um, for lead to, to no cost at all. And um, they're actually, it's a project that um, began in um, 1997, and they are led and organized by the California State University. And um, as I said before, it's an online repository of um, free and open um, content for learning, teaching, research, any other academic um, usage that you can possibly um, think of. And they have about 80, um, 80 thousand educational materials right now as at last night when I checked I think they were about 78 thousand something so I just um, made that the closest number um, and membership is required to make active contributions to um, the Merlot community so, um, you are not required to be a member to actually access their um, content um, that's free, anyone can go on and access that. But for you to make contributions, for you to um, maybe upload um, your own content that you feel will be useful for someone's research or teaching, um, you have to be um, a member to be able to do that. And right now they have about um, 145,000 members, and this is inclusive of um, staff, that's actually paid staff um, of Merlot. Um, volunteers, um, editors, peer reviewers, um, people that actually moderate the site and all of that. Um, they also have different partnership levels. So uh, they have one for educational institutions and this is broken into two, which is um, one, it's system um, partners and this is um, for um, a partner that's a collection of um, colleges or um, institutions or universities and then they have one for an individual college which might not necessarily be um, a, ha um, a higher ed educational institution but still an educational institution and then they have a corporate which tends to the need of um, for-profit organizations and not-for-profit organizations and um, to the resource itself so um, this is going to be a mix of what they actually have and um, the usability section. So as you can see, they have, um, you can search materials. They have an advanced um, materials search. And uh, I was actually expecting to see like a buoy search as um, a lot of um, uh, repositories have right now, but um, Merlo doesn't have that for some reason. But they still have other options. So you can search by title, URL, you know the person, the author who actually put up the material. If you um, know when the material was put up for some reason, uh, I'm pretty sure if you have that kind of information, you probably will not be um, searching, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, you can also search in for, you can also search for members. So um, they're open about putting um, the contents, um, the contacts of all the members online and you can search that as well go through the advanced member search and first name last name uh, position whatever it is uh, they have like a whole list of things and then there's um, the browse all materials and the browse all members so um, while searching um, finding materials they have um, they're all categorized into different disciplines 
So there are like nine major um, disciplines and then there's sub and so on. And uh, you can also, Merlot also search um, through other libraries. So they have a sort I don't want to say partnership, but kind of like collaboration with, um, for example, OER Commons. I think some of us are probably familiar. And you can actually search Merlot and OER Commons at the or something that you um, need to get. And there's the search learning exercises. So this kind of refer to like searching um, practice sessions or assign, um, assignments or things like that. Just um, learning exercises in general. And um, I found it to be um, very, very easy to go through. Um, it's a very straightforward site. So usability instance was pretty good and very straightforward actually. And uh, the technologies that they actually have. So uh, Merlot has um, web services, um, that's APIs, that um, they actually use to provide um, direct access to other third party um, organizations or um, repositories maybe. And uh, some of those websites will include, um, so it, it's dependent on you. If you have basic search access to Merlot, they're gonna provide you with that. If you have advanced search access, they're gonna provide you with that. And then it, um, I think it's about seven to eight options that you have. So you can get from any one of them. And uh, this is also integrated with um, a lot of learning management systems. So what we use here at um, University of Ottawa, they have very good integration with that. And then they have one with um, Desire to Learn, which is the new one we're gonna be using soon. And then they have the Canvas and a lot more. And then they have a content builder system so um, Merlot has like an integrated website development tool that you can use to develop your web pages or maybe even a website if you want. And they give you access, um, they give you the option of making this public, they give you the option of actually choosing to embed a Creative Commons license. That's how you want people to be able to use your data, which is good. And then you can also contribute that you've built back to the Merlot community if you want, so all open. And then they have templates, so it's kind of easy to use. And finally, um, con in conclusion, uh, so um, as I said before, Merlot is a very good site. It's pretty straightforward. Um, looking through their partnership, um, um, the, the members that they had, I noticed that it was all, um, well, partners and members from the United States. And um, I guess it makes sense, but um, I think it would have been really good to actually see like um, contributions or presence of other countries and well, Canada to start with, I guess. And um, also uh, the website seemed a little bit dull. I was almost bored. Um, I think it could have been more um, visually attractive, so I could this with um, OER Commons, and oh my god, it was so bright and beautiful, but uh, this was kind of boring, so they could do something about that. Um, and also, an another thing that I noticed it is um, you can actually change the language of the entire website, so I think that's really good. So, um, for uh, people that are trying to access this from other countries that don't exactly speak English, um, you can make that change. And it's, um, going to be very, very useful for you. And uh, so that's, that's about it. It's a good initiative and that's it. Thank you.